Welcome to Wake Up America. I'm Dorothea DiCecco, and I have an interesting guest for us this evening. His name is Faisal Saleh, and he is coming to us from the Palestine, Palestine Museum U.S. of Woodbridge, Connecticut. Uh, I think that you will find this show very informative, very interesting, and hopefully uh, you will pass on a lot of the information you pick up tonight to lots of other people. Welcome, Faisal. I'd like to thank you for coming. Thank you. And my pleasure. Uh, I think we should start by letting you tell us something about yourself, your background, and, and introduce yourself to the uh, audience. Thank you. Um, I've been uh, in the U.S. Uh, for um, just a, about a month, over 50 years. Uh, I came to this country uh, on June 2nd, 1969. Um, I am Palestinian. Uh, I was born in the uh, town of El Bira, which is next to the, the town of Ramallah, which is better known. I was born in 1951 to uh, a refugee family. My family is originally from a village called Selama, which is three kilometers uh, east of Yaffa on the Mediterranean. Uh, in 1948, uh, my family became refugees and uh, they made their way uh, to Ramallah by way of a small village near Nablus called Silat al-Dahr. I have a sister who was born in transit uh, there, uh, and four years later I was born. Uh, at the time, uh, my parents had 10 other children, so I was children number, child number 11. Uh, my family rented a one-room uh, uh, dwelling from uh, some local family at the time, and uh, the 13 of us were living in that one room, and uh, the room had no water, uh, the restrooms were outside the house, uh, and the conditions were very uh, difficult. My uh, family had lost all their uh, property and all their belongings, and came out with, with the clothes on their backs, basically, uh, and that was... Uh, uh, I, I in 1951 that uh, I was, uh, I joined that, that kind of a situation. Um, I went to schools uh, in the West Bank, uh, and uh, when I, when the time come to uh, finish my high school, I, c I came to the United States after receiving a generous scholarship from a Quaker school in uh, Newtown, Pennsylvania called uh, George School. Uh, there I completed the last year of high school and uh, I applied to colleges there and I got into a, a dozen colleges or so. Only one of them uh, provided me with financial aid and that was Oberlin College in Oberlin, Ohio. Uh, as, a f as a foreign student it was difficult getting financial aid from uh, many of the institutions. However, Oberlin was, um, is, is quite liberal and uh, I guess they saw something in me that was uh, worth the investment on their part. And uh, uh, eventually, uh, as time passed, I uh, proved to them that that was a great investment. <laughs> Very good. Oh. So that's kind of just uh, a, a little bit of uh, background. Yes, that's quite a story, I must say. It parallels a lot of what we're hearing today among refugees trying to come in and yeah. make a new life. Yeah, now, uh, after uh, college, I, I worked. Uh, my first job was in Hartford at the Travelers Insurance Company, and I had a few jobs after that. Uh, five years uh, after college, I decided to go out on my own uh, and strike out uh, in an entrepreneurial uh, capacity, and uh, I worked hard for uh, many, many years and uh, eventually had a very uh, successful uh, business in the employee benefits uh, uh, technology field where I had a, a company that administered benefit plans for large employers and uh, in 2010 after managing that company for 25 years I sold that company to the one of the large uh, global HR consulting firms and uh, I continued to work in that field uh, in different capacities, uh, mostly in the consulting side, and uh, I'm involved in a number of entrepreneurial um, projects as well. And um, a couple years ago, I uh, started working on the, um, the Palestine Museum U.S. project. So I, I have visited the museum, and it's 
in Woodbridge, Connecticut, which is near Prospect and New Haven on the other side, you might say, right? And it's a, let me just comment, it's a beautiful building. I mean, it's in a wonderful location, easy, easily accessible. But I'm just saying that I was so impressed with the space that you have. Uh, lots of windows looking out at trees and beautiful landscaping and then the exhibits and well, we'll let you talk about that. But you found, you're the founder and the executive director of the museum and uh, we'll be talking about that today among other things. But tell us about uh, the, or the origins of the museum. Now you, you're the founder so and the executive director, so you, you direct the program content and mm -hmm. decide whether somebody can come or not. And tell us about programs or whatever you'd like to about the museum. Yeah, first, just uh, a bit <coughs> about uh, the idea behind the museum. Uh, uh, I've been in the country for many years, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, for years I watched uh, as the uh, mainstream media has kind of ignored uh, the Palestinians and the Palestinian issues and mostly uh, focused on violence and terrorism and uh, kind of painted Palestinians in a negative light. Uh, so for the average uh, American person, their, their knowledge about Palestinians and Palestine is, is very limited and it's all derived mostly uh, from the mainstream media, what you see on CNN and some of the other networks. and. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, a lot of that information is one-sided and does not really uh, convey uh, who the real Palestinians are. So the idea behind the museum is really to, to tell uh, the other side of that, to, to tell the human story of the Palestinians. Who are the Palestinians? What are they like? And um, I felt that uh, using uh, the Palestinian arts would be a great way to tell that story. So we want to tell the Palestinian story through the arts, through uh, artistic uh, work, uh, through paintings, through films, uh, through poetry, through literature. Uh, we want to um, kind of show the human side of the Palestinians. We, wanna, we want the American people to know that Palestinians are human, just like anybody else. And as such, they're also entitled to human rights uh, uh, contrary to what uh, you know, the enemies of Palestinians say, uh, and con contrary to what the impres impression one gets from a lot of the, the, the media that's been uh, historically, uh, you know, focusing on on the negative side of the Palestinians. No, <coughs> you're right about all of that, and it's interesting. Um, when I was there and saw paintings, as you say photographic exhibits. Uh, you have a whole room of children's paintings and drawings uh, of their impressions and these are from Palestinian children living today uh, either in Gaza or the West Bank and they've even, you've even compiled a book of their drawings and paintings and it's called A Child's View from Gaza and um, it's worth the visit to the museum to see the, the works of art, many of them um, fabrics, woven cloth that's just exquisitely done. And you think, gee, I didn't know people were doing that today. I mean, some of it was uh, that you have on model doll sort of uh, uh, clothing that's um, just so beautifully done. I, I brought this little piece that I picked up there. It's a small purse with, again, I don't know that you'll be able to see too much of it, but hopefully you'll go there and look at the exhibits. But just this uh, fascinating, beautifully designed piece that <laughs> deserves it. You know, it's a piece of art, really, which is what you're, you're saying. And you put money in it, you can carry things in it, and it's just a, a lovely piece. But uh, we'll l l let me uh, let me just correct something about the book. Oh, uh, yes. we, we did not really uh, compile the book. This uh, book was uh, published uh, by uh, an organization called Mecca, which is Middle East Children's Alliance. Uh, it's uh, an NGO uh, based in the West Coast, um, and it talks about um, the um, the Gaza children's art. Um, 
that was uh, brought to the U.S. here um, in the aftermath of uh, an Israeli uh, attack on Gaza that, that lasted many weeks uh, in 2009. Uh, it was called Operation Cast Lead. Uh, and a lot of that lead, of course, ended up, you know, into the people of Gaza and some, and some of the children. Uh, obviously, uh, almost all the children in Gaza were traumatized uh, as a result of that uh, experience. And uh, some of the uh, NGOs have uh, uh, sponsored um, treatments for the children, uh, psychological counseling, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and part of that uh, involved um, asking the children to draw what, what they saw during the attacks. And uh, these drawings were gathered, there's about 200 of them uh, by one of the NGOs. Uh, they were brought to the U.S. Uh, with the idea of exhibiting them in the U.S. and kind of sharing uh, that information with the American public. And every time they try to uh, exhibit those in a venue, uh, the uh, people who are not very sympathetic with the Palestinians would use their influence to, to prevent those exhibits from taking place and to, to cancel them. Um, and uh, this book... Uh, actually talks about that. The book has a stamp called Censored in it. Uh, to, 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 and it talks about a number of these attempts that uh, uh, were not successful at, at showing these um, the children drawings. Um, uh, the last one of them was uh, at the Oakland uh, Children's Museum. And that was uh, several years ago. And since then, uh, these uh, drawings were not shown until our museum opened and we were the first uh, uh, museum uh, to actually exhibit these uh, drawings. And um, uh, it, it took like uh, nine years uh, mm -hmm. for them to be actually made public, for, pe for people to be able to mm -hmm. see them. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Um, looking at the pictures, they're, they're not happy pictures. How could they be? But the fact that this is what affected the children, obviously. You said this lasted about, what, six, eight days or whatever? Oh, this more than the that. The bombing. Well, at least three weeks or three so. Three weeks of yeah. constant airplanes, hel helicopters. Tanks. Bombing, sea, tanks. From the sea, from the air, from everywhere. From the sea. Uh, a, lot of dis a lot of destruction. And also, this thing happened again in 2014. Mm -hmm. In 2014, there were 51 days of, of bombardment uh, on Gaza from the, from the air, from the ground, from the sea, and a whole neighborhoods were destroyed, and whole families were killed. Uh, there were 1,000 children uh, became permanently disabled in 2014. 547 children were killed in that uh, operation. Now, the, the so-called operation, they make it sound like it. they went in, the Israeli army and whatever, went in to retaliate for some kind of terror, terror activity that the Palestinians uh, subjected Israel mm -hmm. to, right? So we don't hear about what did they actually do, maybe they killed a few uh, Jewish people, Israelis, and maybe not. Well, there, there were a few Jewish casualties, you know, a few Israeli few, casualties. A few Israeli casualties. Uh, during that exchange. Yeah, so uh, then they retaliated. The predominant, uh, mm -hmm. you know, casualties and destruction was uh, uh, in Gaza. Yeah. And uh, also, mean, it's important to keep in mind that the Gaza has been under siege for the last 10 years or so. Yes. Uh, and uh, things... Israel controls what goes in Gaza, and uh, they've been limiting uh, the supplies of, uh, of, of food and uh, the supplies of material that people need to live Medicine. and to build, etc. And uh, uh, the blockade is, is, is uh, very suffocating, and uh, basically uh, it created uh, what, what is best described as the world's largest open-air prison, basically. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, the conditions there uh, are inhuman, and uh, you know a lot of the international agencies are warning 
of, of uh, you know, uh, a catastrophic situation from, from uh, you know, the, the quality of life and, and, and human condition in Gaza. But to have to retaliate for weeks with bombs and killing, wiping out cities, we don't hear that here in the news. You don't. No. I didn't. And I, th I think, you know, based on what we get in the newspapers and television, which is yeah. where, and most people get it off their little yeah. cell phones and all, uh, it's totally ignored. And Israel does this without, you know, being punished. And you say the world is looking at it. They, everyone reacts in outrage. That I'm sure, the, you know, when they hear about it, but nothing, nothing no, one, no one says, yeah. Israel, don't do this. Yeah. We're not going to allow you to do this. We're going to defend the Palestinians. When you do this again, you're going to get shot. I mean, I'm, it's just uh, incredible to me that these people have suffered for how many years now? Since well, the 40s? Uh, well, 50s? since 48 and again yeah. since 67. So the, the <coughs> a lot of Palestinians have been under occupation since 1967. Yeah and uh, Palestinians lost their homes and were refugees in 1948. So there's 70 years of being refugees and 50 years of being under occupation. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the conflict, uh, if, you, if one can even describe it as a conflict, uh, is so asymmetrical. Uh, Israel has the overwhelming power. It has the latest technology, the latest war machines, and it's, uh, uh, rich, it's, it's funded by the United States. The U.S. gives Israel $3.5 billion of, of weaponry and military aid each year, and the bulk of that is used to subdue Palestinians and attack them, like they do in Gaza, for instance. And Israel uses and, and tests and experiments with the latest weapons technology that then it turns around and sells it to other countries oh. as field tested and field oh. proven on in real life yeah. situations and they're really these weapons are field tested on people in Gaza. Now the weaponry is produced here or well, other Some countries? of it is produced in the US, yeah. some is produced in Israel um, and uh, you know the, the airplanes that carry out the bombings are, are American made American. aircraft. Yeah. Uh, the helicopters are American-made. Uh, the munitions used are made by the United yeah. States. Uh, so I'm thinking, if, if I lived in that area, and not ne necessarily a Palestinian, anybody living in any of the Middle Eastern countries knows what's going on. And they know these are Amer they see American-made yeah. planes. They know that America gives billions every year to Israel. How can you not? I mean, this yeah. is bad f for their impression of us. How, uh, and they're talking about how, you know, there's lots of terrorism and opposition. But what, what can you say? I, I just don't understand how we continue when we see we're provoking this thinking, mm -hmm. right? We're provoking it all by doing this. Israel has atomic weapons. Right? They yeah. can, they can blow, they want to blow up Iran. So th this is the kind of drawings the children yes. have done. Uh, and we can see this is a helicopter uh, firing a missile. Yes. And the helicopter has the Star of David. Oh, yes. Uh, every Israeli airplane and a helicopter has the Star of David on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the children of Gaza are not anti-Semitic. They only know what they see on the machines sure. that drop bombs and missiles at them. They see that the F-16 fighter planes have the Star of David on them. And Israel has hijacked the Jewish religion and using its symbols on its war machines. Yeah, right. So the yeah. people who are on the other end, on the receiving end of these missiles and bombs that drop are seeing, that, that's what they're seeing. That's why the children are drawing it. Yeah, that was a surprise drawings. to me to see that symbol on so many of the children's yeah. drawings. You All know? you have to do is go, go on Google, on Google, do a Google search and type Israeli Air Force, oh. and you'll see F-16s right. with Star of David right. on it. And these, the, 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 these are the, the actual things that people see. Uh, and, and these are, are the machines that yeah. drop the bombs on Gaza. 
So only the victims see this because, I mean, when they do Israeli planes fly over other parts of Asia and Asia and Middle East? I don't East? think so. Yeah. I don't think they're... So it's interesting that this symbol, which historically means something else, they say through the religion and all, is being used to kill people. And again, you said this is like one open air prison, but if I lived there, I could not travel out of the boundaries of Gaza, right? It's to very go difficult anywhere. to get. You have to get a permit, yeah. and permits are difficult to get. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, people who are sick uh, are unable yeah. to leave to get treatment elsewhere because Gaza is short on medicine, is short on supplies, uh, because the, all those are controlled. Uh, and uh, uh, in some cases, Israel has allowed children to be uh, treated in Israeli hospitals, but it would decline uh, to, to allow the parents of the children go to them. And recently, uh, there was um, uh, an article um, uh, in the uh, Hartford Current about a Palestinian child who had one week to live, and uh, they were being treated at an Israeli hospital uh, but the parents were not allowed mm -hmm. to be uh, with their child uh, for the last mm -hmm. week of their life. It's and I don't know how anybody could no, defend I such a thing no, or could justify that just kind of thing. It's just the just cruelty inhuman. of it all is um, and, and it's senseless. Uh, wh yeah. wh what, ac what does that accomplish for Israel? I think just the act of doing it somehow makes them feel good. I mean, you don't do that and not get any kind of uh, feedback from it. So it's like the kids, the children, and the families on the Texas, the Southern American border that we're hearing about. Such cruelty and lack of understanding. And, but it has to be a, a deliberate pro process yeah. that the government supports, right, and promotes to allow this to happen. Yeah. And it's not just the Israeli government that supports no, it. Well, the disheartening thing yeah. is that the U.S. government uh, yeah. under Mr. Trump uh, is giving Israel carte blanche. In yes. fact, they're encouraging Israel to do things that, yeah. like, for instance, the, the, the Trump wants Israel to annex the Golan Heights. They want us to annex parts of the West Bank. He, he was uh, very in, um, instrumental in moving the American embassy to Jerusalem. Oh, yes. He's really, you know, uh, doing uh, all this for Israel and wants Israel to even go further. He's egging them on to, 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 pr to, to go further in all the um, violations that they have, all the violations of international law. Well, all the land that's taken from the Palestinian people and now, just because Israel has the force and the military and it can't be reversed, I mean, Israel is just taking over all the land. Yeah. So Pretty what is, soon what's the outcome? They, they want to get rid of all Palestinian people? Are well, they, 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 certainly, they, doing it? You know, they, they certainly don't want Palestinians in areas where they want to build their own state. Yeah. And that's been clear from, like, you know, the early... 1900s, and it, it, of course, it accelerated after the establishment of Israel, uh, where they got rid of you know 750,000 uh, Palestinians who were refugees, and now uh, in the West Bank, in uh, in a short while, we we could have as many as a million settlers living in illegal settlements on the West Bank, <coughs> and. Uh, all with the acquiescence of the United States in violation of international law. Yes. Now the world, the world knows this. All the other countries, they are not, I mean, they're informed. And certainly the inhumanity of it is beyond tolerance as yeah. people, but they don't condemn, I mean, I, I don't know. They well, may there's, within their... There's own. widespread condemnation of Israel, but yeah. the United States, States so ignores powerful. all that. Yeah. And the United States supports and Israel uh, in, and gives Israel uh, a free hand yeah. in, in doing all these things. Uh, I mean, Israel 
um, arrests children, uh, tries children in military courts, uh, which is against, uh, against international law. Um, and uh, Israel Im currently <coughs> imprisons a large number of children in, in its prisons. And sometimes uh, they come in the middle of the night and they, they raid people's homes in the West Bank and walk out with, with wanted people. Some of the, sometimes they're adults, sometimes the wanted people are children, like under, under age. And they, they take them and they disappear and the parents really don't know what's going on with them for months at a time. I mean, there are, there are some volunteer lawyers who, who try to represent the children in Israeli military courts, but you know, the, the military courts really have, uh, have their own laws, and these laws are not really sympathetic to the children or Palestinians in general. Now, there has to be tremendous support for the military here in this country um, and the producers of all the military mm -hmm. paraphernalia, whatever. And uh, there's lots of money. It's over, what, 56% or something of the American budget goes to the military. Yes. So we, me, out of our taxes, we're paying for all this stuff. But we don't think, wow, this is going uh, three plus billion going to Israel annually, and here we're talking about, well, we can't have health care for everybody, we can't pay for people's education, you know, we can't fix our infrastructure because we don't have enough money. Yeah. You know, where are you going to get the money in addition to tax cuts that they gave people? But uh, so th there has to be strong support by these military you know, producers, uh, equipment, planes, ships, when you look at what we have over there and here. Um, so they influence our Congress, obviously, through mm -hmm. lobbyists. So we never hear of Congress criticizing any of this or, I mean, I don't know, are there any laws that we've ever passed? That on the contrary, said, uh, sorry for interrupting, no, but on ahead. the contrary, uh, we're seeing an increasing number of uh, bills and passed legislations on, in state houses and now in the in, in the U.S. Congress uh, that are aimed at uh, suppressing uh, the freedom of speech uh, for those people who want to boycott Israel. Th there's a movement called BDS, uh, boycott, divest, oh, yes. uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and. There, there's been legislation passed that criminal, criminalizes uh, boycotting of Israel. Uh, and you, you know, really? in, in, in like 35 states, yeah. if you yeah. boycott Israel, yes. you could, or if you refuse to, to agree not to boycott Israeli products, and not just Israeli products, Israeli products that were made in the illegal settlements, uh, then you could lose your job. And if people have been fired from their jobs, from their like, not allowed to make a living mm. because they refused to sign a form that said they pledged not to boycott any of the settlement's products. Now this is in this America This is in the America now, in, today. in 35 states. 35 states. Uh, no and idea. this legislation that was passed in Congress uh, earlier this year uh, that will make <coughs> it difficult for people mm. to express their ideas by boycotting a product. Now, a boycott is a form of speech. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I could tell you uh, there's a senator in Connecticut that actually voted for that kind of legislation. And he, he, he decided that he will trash the First Amendment uh, oh. to please the state of Israel. Uh, and I think the voters in Connecticut mm -hmm. Uh, should learn more about that. They should learn more as to w how uh, that legislation, uh, how it restricts uh, people's uh, ability uh, uh, to expre express uh, speech and, and to act in a way uh, that is protected by the Constitution. Now, most of these laws in the states are unconstitutional, and as they are being challenged one by one, they're being struck down for their unconstitutionality. Okay. And uh, we, we expect that we'll see more of them struck down. But uh, the people behind these laws keep trying and, and trying to 
uh, make them more subtle, uh, changing them so yeah. they're not directly yeah. unconstitutional, but indirectly. Mm. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's kind of a struggle to, to, to try to preserve the First Amendment rights in this country right now. I've never heard of this. It's all new information yeah. for me. And so people can find this information by looking specifically, if you wanted to go online, yeah. how, what do you type in? Uh, you type in Blumenthal, <laughs> uh, and then you type um, laws, legislation uh, to uh, criminalize um, boycott of Israel. And I'll, I'll bet uh -huh. you, you would see the name right. of uh, the piece of legislation that Senator Blumenthal voted for. Nationally. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, in, it's in the U.S. Right. U.S. Senate. That. Wow, that's uh, it's so hard to believe. That Th there is a new piece of legislation uh, that is sponsored um, by uh, Congresswoman McCollum from Minnesota. Uh, that legislation is intended to protect the rights of Palestinian children okay. against all the things we talked about. And that legislation is co-sponsored by 25 uh, uh, congressmen and congresswomen around the country. Um, one of the Connecticut um, congresswomen, um, uh, I believe Congresswoman DeLauro, was one of the sponsors. But under pressure, she recently withdrew her sponsorship of that particular legislation. And uh, we do hope that she will reconsider that. Because that, that legislation is very important mm -hmm. to protecting the rights of children and how children are being treated. Uh, it's the same kind of thing that we see happening on our borders, uh, where, where families are broken up and children are, are, are being kept in, in subhuman conditions. Uh, the same thing happens in Palestine uh, by Israel. Yes. And, and, and that, that is happening, uh, it's been happening for years and it's getting even happening more and more now. And, and that's why we, those children need the protection. Oh, they yeah. need to be protected. Uh, and um, the legislation in Congress is intended to do that. Now, you say Rosa DeLauro, under pressure, rescinded her support. Withdrew. Withdrew, withdrew her support. Oh, all right. What's the pressure then? Uh, you, you, you can ask her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that. Uh, it's obviously uh, people uh, who are pro-Israel. Yeah. Uh, what did they say? You know, we won't give you money to run for office anymore. Well, well it's <laughs> one of them, maybe. Or w I don't. But it must have been pretty powerful because she's a pretty strong-minded yeah. uh, person. We have right we have, a, we have hope that she would uh, reconsider yeah. that and re-support the yeah, legislation. It's, uh, it gets to the point where winning a position for office should be put number two as opposed to what, you know, what the uh, legislation. Th that'd be a refreshing change I know, in this wouldn't country. it be? Oh, yeah. I know, I'm just saying that people are saying that more, a little bit more now, uh, I've heard. But um, it's just um, as we speak, you know, and then we leave the studio and go home and go about our business, and this is all going on in Isra Israel and the Palestinians are being persecuted, killed, the numbers of dead, we don't hear that, uh, through all the bombings. And, and to, to have a book where they said, children, draw some pictures. These poor kids are all, as you say, traumatized. Uh, in another sense, life goes on there among Palestinians in this open air prison and uh, I mean they have schools right and yes they, it, people are well educated yes the Palestinians the are among the, among the best the educated best, yeah despite all the yeah, obstacles which is, uh, yeah, and uh, there there must not be jobs yeah, there, there are 500,000 children that go to schools that are operated by the UNRWA, the UNRWA, which is the United oh. Nations Relief and Works oh, Agency. Is that right? yes. And that's the agency uh, that Mr. Trump has discontinued the U.S. Oh, yes. uh, contribution yes. to in the, in, the, in the amount of $300 million that was used to fund, the, uh, to partially fund UNRWA, which UNRWA 
operates the schools. It also operates clinics uh, that, mm -hmm. that treats refugee in the people in refugee camps, including women and children. And also discontinued aid to five Palestinian church-sponsored hospitals in Jerusalem. They were ge those wow. hospitals were getting about 20 to 30 million dollars mm -hmm. of aid from the United States to, su to support you know, the medical uh, needs of the hospitals <coughs> who treat people for uh, a variety of advanced diseases because a lot of the other hospitals don't have the resources. And Mr. Trump d discontinued uh, the, those modest contributions that they were being provided to these hospitals. So he, as we know, uh, uh, operates within his own mind and doesn't consult with other people or consider that this is a horrific thing that you know, his government is doing. I mean, he j it's just uh, I mean, these are church so difficult. Yeah, church-operated church yes. you healthcare yeah. institutions. So he has to know there's a lot of suffering because of withdrawing this funding. And you know, no one says to him, oh, you've got kids. Would you sit there and allow your children to die? What if your children, you ask your children to draw pictures of the place where they live and they drew pictures like this of bombs? Well, how would you feel about that? You know, the reporters, they'll ask him a question and he'll answer it in some evasive way as usual, but they don't say, what about your kids and your family? If, if, what would you do in the case like this? If you were a refugee, what would you do? If, well, you, if your you know, kid has one week to live, yeah, and you can't, you let him die alone, yes, in a in a strange place without any yeah. any relatives or family, yeah. and the parents are away and they're fretting over, of course, their dying child. Yeah, how would he feel about yeah. that? Well, just how would you feel when you're separated from your child? Mm -hmm. When you are you all travel together, you are, you're father, mother, yeah, and all of you. Being separated is bad enough. Just I think know. when the child is dying. Yeah, I know. But I'm uh, just saying being separated yeah. and not knowing where they are, whether they're well or not, whether it's a 15 or 20 year old or a baby, like what's happening mm -hmm. in this country. And certainly this is what's being experienced now uh, among the Palestinians. How many people have lost their children and wonder where they are? And uh, That's one of the most cruel things. And it's almost now a punishment that they're intentionally using to make life worse. I mean, it's bad enough, yeah. no medicine, no food, uh, restricting the uh, water rights along the yeah. coast there where the Palestinians could go fishing, what, they, they made it uh, narrower, but the, the big fish and stuff were out farther, yeah. and so that upset. But well, what is going on really now in, uh, in Israel and in, in the, con the areas that it controls of Palestine, which pretty much Israel uh, controls all of Palestine. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it, even though they're not located inside Gaza, but they control the borders of Gaza and, and they have full control about everything yeah. that flies over Gaza, everything around it, yeah. everything that goes in and out. And the same with the West Bank. They have carte blanche to go any place in the West Bank in the middle of the night, arrest anybody, you know, uh, break into anybody's home in the middle of the night and take them out and do whatever they want with them. Uh, and on top of that, uh, Israel is an apartheid state now. We all know what apartheid was in Africa. Israel has taken that to the nth degree. So there are roads for the Israelis and there are roads for Palestinians. The Palestinian roads are in terrible condition, really? uh -huh. very long. People mm. sometimes have to go uh, on unpaved road, use mules to get around to carry stuff because the, the main roads are available to them. There's water for Israelis and settlers, and the people who live like a quarter of a mile from the settlements, th they're not allowed to dig a well. You, it, digging a well requires a permit. And Israel does not give Palestinians permits to dig wells to get water out of the ground. Meanwhile, you know, a 50,000 inhabitant illegal settlement has gardens and flowers and grass 
and, 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 and fountains that, that uses water yeah. taken from the Palestinian grounds. And that's the water that Palestinians are not allowed to get. And so the f Palestinian farmers are struggling to get water to water their vegetables, which they rely on to, for, their own li for, for making a living at a time when the settlements are thriving and the settlements look like y you could mistake in them for Southern California, yeah, basically. These are Israeli settlements. There are Israeli settlements That's on Palestinian on land animals. that by international law are illegal. Illegal, yes. And everyone says that, yeah. knows they're illegal, but they're uh, increasing the size of them. They just, what, take over the land? Would the troops go in there and say... Well, there are all kinds of excuses for taking over Ways to get people to move yeah. out, and these people become refugees then and yeah. have to find mm -hmm. some way to go. Where do they go when their land is taken? I mean, can you imagine another thing? I sit in my yard in my house, and I'm thinking, I don't... I can't imagine, you know, somebody coming, troops, army, people, or whatever you say, laws, illegally taking the land from me, and I have to just leave it without, I have no recourse, no court system. Well, you to can go, go to the Israeli court system, but yeah, the court well, system is, is, is designed for Israelis, not for Palestinians. But, but looking again at the early maps, you know, Palestine was that whole piece. Uh, there were some Jewish settlements or concentrations of, of Jewish people, uh, and then it was just reversed during what the after World War Two and Israel after nineteen forty eight. Forty eight, say. But and when you look at the maps now, I mean you've got the West Bank, which used to be one large area of Palestinians, but the settlements have gone in there and just taken over that property and built, as you say, homes and roads and businesses and it looks like you know um, you say california or something yeah. and uh but the palestinian refugee number must have gone up tremendously and a lot of these people i mean i can understand the uh, as best i can how hor the horror of it all you have kids that have no future if you're a refugee what are the chances of them having a, you know any kind of a normal life the, and and so these kids grow up and they join groups that are called terrorists today and we use that word freely meaning anybody that's against America or against some of these colonial colonialists and Israel is just saying well we're gonna bomb Iran now we're gonna wanna bomb Iran and they have nuclear bombs and these people are trying to live, and they're, they're becoming, uh, I mean, they, they're not following laws. How can you follow the laws of the <laughs> oppressor, you know? I mean, it's just, they've made a terrible mess of the lives of all these people, and I don't know how long this can go on. The, the, the human cost oh. of establishing the state of Israel oh, it's is be. so huge. It has to be. Uh, it, it's, it's a huge cost. And it's all borne by the Palestinian yeah, people yeah, in, yes. in terms of the, the loss of property, the loss of financial means, the loss mm. of self-esteem, the anguish, the pain, the suffering yes. of the Palestinians. Yeah. That cost is a tremendous cost. Oh, uh, no and question. that cost continues to rise and rise and rise every day and every year. There are 38 Palestinian refugee camps that exist today some of them in places like Lebanon or Jordan that are, th that are people oh. are living under inhuman uh -huh. conditions. Uh, oh, 38. And 38 refugee people camps. Left, have left These are people here. still living in refugee yes. camps. Oh. They started as tents wow. in 1948 oh, and they became <laughs> ramshackles, mud houses, uh, and they, some of them, you know, they were built up in concrete, but they're, they're the dwellings are on top of each other. They're alleys instead of yeah. streets. They're very little in terms of services. And nobody really in his right mind would want to live there if given a choice. Of course, yes. And yet... And so that, that cost is a mm. tremendous cost. And the establishment of the State of Israel uh, uh, was supposed to not interfere 
with uh, the rights and of the of the population who was in Palestine. This is according to the Balfour Declaration. I'm not necessarily no, agreeing with that, course. but just yeah. saying yes. a, as a bare minimum, the Balfour Declaration, which uh, promised, uh, you know, to look favorably by the British Empire at the time on the establishment of a of a, a, a national home for the Jewish people, uh, stipulated that provided that you know the the current population would not be adversely affected. But look, oh, look how adversely wow. affected it got. Uh, this little note inside of this little purse that I got is really interesting. I mean, as I said, the beauty and artistry and skill of producing this. Yeah, this is a handmade embroidery. Yeah, handmade. One stitch handmade. at a stitch one, by one stitch. One stitch. I mean, I wish we could really blow this up to show people. But it says, the product you have purchased was handcrafted by men and women in the Atfaluna, is that, sir, am I saying that mm -hmm. right? Craft Center, an income generation program of the Atfaluna Society for Deaf Children in the Gaza Strip. Yeah, so you I think, it? yeah. Atfaluna. Atfaluna. Yeah, Atfaluna well, means our children. Ah, I see. The Al -chil our Children's Craft Center. Ah, I That's see. That's the name of the organization. Yeah. So they, somebody d did this, and they sewed it together, and then they put this little thing in here for us to read. And I, I just saw it sitting at a table, because you have gifts. Just back to the uh, museum for a minute. Yep. And uh, it, there are books. There are all kinds of beautiful uh, cloth uh, placemats or whatever. Cushions. Cushion, oh, cushions. Yeah. Some of these, I mean, they're so beautiful, the, I wouldn't, I'd like to frame them and hang them up because <laughs> they're, they're works of art and yeah. perfect. I mean, just perfect things. We really got distracted. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to talk about the museum. I know. Well, we're going to get back to this uh, sorry, now. No, got, that's all right. We this got is off the, track that's here. That's, well, it isn't. Uh, it's all part of the same story, yeah. and we'll have to just do this some more. But as far as the museum goes, um, as I said, it's, um, it's quite a large, how many square feet do you uh, have? 6,000 square feet 6, of exhibit space, wow. yeah, which includes uh, an auditorium that holds about 125 oh, people. Yes. For, uh, and we oh. do uh, lectures, uh, concerts, uh, uh, and uh, performances. Uh, and uh, we have uh, a lot of large, we entertain large groups of visitors also. They come in oh. and, and sit at the, uh, in the auditorium. We have had some uh, organiz nonprofit organization that came and used uh, our venue as a meeting place for mm -hmm. their meetings. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there's no admission. Uh, admissions is free. It's free admission. So if you want to learn something and just have uh, an experience that you have never had, um, showing, as you say, works of art, photographs, uh, fabrics, sewing, and all em kinds em of embroidered, embroider embroidered embroideries uh, and um, um, traditional Palestinian dresses oh that yes. are embroidered. Oh. Some of them are very are historic, going back oh, that's right. over a hundred years. Yes, uh, we have a, a collection of those dresses. Nicely displayed. We also, mm -hmm. in addition to the photographs, we have sculptures by Palestinian artists mm -hmm. in, in Palestine and in the diaspora. Uh, we have uh, over uh, uh, maybe a hundred, two hundred paintings uh, on display. Uh, we have hundreds of photographs. Uh, we have uh, an extensive coin collection of Palestinian coins oh. that were uh, minted by the British mandate in Palestine right. from 1927 oh. to 1948. Uh, there we have 56 of the 59 coins that were minted oh, during that era. Oh. Um, there are also um, uh, artifacts, uh, and uh, a, a large book collection also that's in the museum. Uh, and um, we have maps and we have a globe that goes back to 1930. 
really? uh, or the name Palestine is actually shown on the globe. Oh. This is a Rand McNally globe oh, that was made in the early 1930s. Oh. We know that b by looking at the different country names that existed oh, yes. and from that figuring out what era it was. For instance, there was like, you, you would see something like French Indochina. Oh, right. uh, we know that's Vietnam when it was under French occupation. We also uh, see that uh, there's a, a country referred to as Chosen, and we know that is Korea when it was occupied by the, by the Japanese, and it's the same color as Japan. Uh, by looking at all these countries, uh, we determined yeah, that it was, it has to be before 1937 and after mm. 1930. Yeah, that globe in itself is a history of colonialism it and is. power yeah. and now the changes and yeah. a lot of those countries have come out of that. Yeah, you know, we have Vietnam, like, there's a country India. in it called Rhodesia. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, yeah, all Botswana and yeah, all <laughs> it's amazing. And the um, it would say like French Western Africa. Uh, oh yes, sure. And uh, all kinds of other uh, other colonial names like that. I know when people talk about these colonized nations and say, "Why can't they do this? Or why are they just doing this?" I mean, how could they couldn't have done anything all those years? But in spite of yeah. that, people still do things, you yeah. know what I mean? There is that, that and the thing the And that's the thing spirit. about the Palestinian arts. I mean, yeah. the Palestinians live in under extreme conditions. Ah. And we have at least 10 artists from Gaza who are exhibiting their work at the, at the, at the museum. wonderful. And yeah. uh, as you know, in Gaza, electricity is limited during the day. Uh, people uh, sometimes mm. they can't work until electricity goes on, and then as soon as electricity goes on, everybody scurries to their homes and doing all their internet stuff and all okay. that, and, and and then electricity goes off and, uh, and back oh. and forth every day. It's um, but at the same time, they're producing beautiful yes, they art are, yes. and they're producing all kinds of uh, things that are quite impressive. I mean, it is interesting, you know human beings, you know, how we evolved and have this art and expression, whereas other creatures don't, as far as we know, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it's just something that makes us feel better to do this, you know, mm -hmm. to produce something beautiful and you like taking the time and it, it's helpful psychologically to do this and yeah. that's why people do it. But it's wonderful that you have this collection it sounds like it's you've almost created a you know a museum and historical center and art center and like mm -hmm. you say uh, showing people's not only uh, visual art but music and uh, all of that under one roof in uh, Connecticut you know Woodbridge Connecticut and uh, it's Wor worth a visit. Those of you that haven't been there, uh, you can drive, what is it, Route 69 mm -hmm. uh, or Litchfield, Litchfield Turnpike. Litchfield Turnpike, that's in, called. In that's where it's called. And it's, it's also right there. It's also exit 59 off the parkway. It's uh, the exit uh, immediately south of the tunnel. Oh, the Merritt uh, Parkway. On the Merritt Parkway. Yeah, so that, yeah. It, well, everybody can Google that. But we have. Uh, we have anything here now on um, talking about Googling this, your the website. website. I don't know. I think they put it on. Hopefully, he's put it on. But what is the website? One uh, more it's time. It's palestinemuseum.us. That's right. Palestinemuseum.us. Uh, dot dot yes. And yeah. that's the same name that can be found on Facebook and Instagram as well. Oh, with a dot. With yeah. a dot, palestinemuseum.us. Palestine That's very easy. And the name of the museum is Palestine Museum U.S. US. And you say the U.S. is there yeah. always uh, after the, the name, mm -hmm. just to separate it from any anything else. But I think that, um, th well, this weekend there's something going on. Yeah, Sunday. we have uh, uh, an exhibit for a Palestinian artist, artist. who lives in Amman, Jordan. 
And uh, we were also going to have a, a teleconference, a video teleconference with that author. Oh. Uh, she will be talking about her work, oh. and we're going to, uh, audience can ask her <coughs> questions and and through, what time through the is video teleconference. It's 2, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday, July 7th mm -hmm. at the Palestine Museum U.S. in Woodbridge. Now, hopefully this show will air in a couple of days before that week, before yeah. the weekend. Wow. And, and after that, it'll still be there. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, so. events. Uh, people can just go to our website. Yes. Uh, and then under events, the, there's a list of uh, upcoming events. And, and at a given time, there's two or three events yes. uh, on the calendar. And uh, the events vary from uh, art, art openings and mm -hmm. artist receptions to uh, concerts, uh, to lectures, mm -hmm. uh, film <coughs> screenings, etc. Well, people that are <coughs> interested in knowing about other people, especially people that you have such negative information about because I, I don't know that when people hear Palestine or Palestinians again as you presented earlier it's always a, a negative thing but how can that be they're human beings like everybody else so they have to be doing and liking what other people like and they're producing their they're putting their mark on the music and the art and it's not all negative of course I mean they do portraits and whatever else uh, people like to do but um, I think and especially when you don't have to pay anything to go there bring your kids and look at stuff you know it's uh, I, I was so impressed with the, the building itself I mean I would suggest and, uh, that the American people would should consider visiting because uh, for one thing they'd like to know what the three and a half billion of their dollars uh, is doing to people yes uh, and to see the people on the receiving end of, of, that, of, of that military aid, to see the yeah, art that they're producing and the music that they have. That's and, a wonderful and point. And to see the, the, the embroidery yes. and, and, and yes. all the artistic yes. excellence yes. Uh, that is happening despite the three and a half billion dollars of military yeah. Uh, yeah. that's being directed at them. I like that comment. It's I mean, uh, it says uh, a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I think there are some things that are being done in the name of the American people mm -hmm. that I'm sure a lot of the American peoples would not want to be oh, done in their name. Oh, we know, we all know uh, that. And, and I think that's very important. I, I, it behooves us all to find out what our government is doing on our mm -hmm, behalf, mm -hmm, at mm -hmm. least what they say on our behalf. Yeah. And I think I, it's very important for us to speak. And we can't say we didn't know. That did, th that we didn't know uh, did not work in the past, and it will not work now. No, it never works. That's true. It never works. But just this would be a wonderful start to go to uh, Woodbridge and just spend some time there and a free concert this Sunday. And uh, uh, it's a reception. I, uh, and sorry. The reception? Uh, it's an artist reception. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. I, sorry, <laughs> I said concert. <laughs> yes. But uh, and you can get on their mailing list, right? Yes. And e you could do it on email the when you get there. Sign actually up. Actually, you could do it on the website. Or as on well. the website, yeah. yeah. So, so you get notified of events. Yes, because that's how some friends that yeah. I know found out yeah. about it and called yeah. and said, "Would you like to go?" Uh, I, I just wanted to say something at the end. Yes. Um, that uh, I am a U.S. citizen mm -hmm. and I'm proud to be a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. I'm a. Uh, a Palestinian American and I'm proud to be an American in this country uh, what I did in the museum can only be done in a country like the United States yes. that well would not have been possible in any other countries and the reason is because this country has a freedom we still have our freedom and we hope that we keep it despite all the new legislation that's going on yes and um, uh, I'm proud to be in here and um, I've spent 50 years here, so I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm part of this country just like anyone else. Well, thank you for that. I believe our time is up. I want to shake your hand. Thank, thank you so you much for, and, uh, for the opportunity. Yes, and, and uh, we'll do this again because I think you have more, indeed, a lot more to say. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Hope you enjoyed the program. <laughs>